talk about rioting in the streets, you start taking people's money out of the bank. They did a trial run in Cyprus. They took every bit of the money out. And they gave everybody back 90% and kept 10%. They found out everybody was excited. They got 90% back. They didn't complain about the 10. They're doing the same in Greece. Amen. But America, Americans don't want to give up 10% because of the big boys and the banks uh, are using and misusing our money. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. You work too hard for your money for the government just to take it. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, if everybody goes to the bank to get their money, that's not there. And so they're hoping everybody don't go to the bank and get their money. But there are some senators that are saying, you better go get your money. Amen. And have some cash on hand. And, and Wall Street can't understand why there is a correction between September and October. Between the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles. It just so happens that the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles is all in this month this year. Things are fixing to change. I encourage you, amen, have some cash on hand. I encourage you, get you some gold or silver or hold on to it. Don't get rid of it, amen. Have a yard sale, amen. Get ready because there's things fixing to change. Now, okay, you're not in the stock market, no big deal. But listen, the stock market around the world starts crumbling. It's a domino effect. And everybody wants their money. And it causes problems because people get upset and they're mad because they don't have their you know, monies to go to Walmart or Kmart or whatever. I'm just telling you that ahead of time to be prepared because this, this economic system over the next 90 days is fixing to be topsy-turvy. You can take that to the bank. Amen? Now watch this. I said, Lord, there's something with Hezekiah. I've been saying that for 29 years. You give him 15 years. And God told me back in March, okay, now that you got the correct time... Of the six days from Adam to Abraham, from Abraham to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. By the way, God gave him the very year he'd be crucified. Do you know that? Do you know God gave the very year Jesus would be crucified? In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people to make an end of sins, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to anoint the most holy. Talking about Jesus. These 70 weeks are three time periods. Seven weeks, which is 49 years. Each week is seven years. Seven weeks. When they come out of Iraq, when Nebuchadnezzar took the children of Israel, destroyed Solomon's temple, took them to Iraq for seven years. They came out, took them 49 years to rebuild Jerusalem, seven weeks. 62 more weeks. That's in Daniel 9, verse 25 and 26. Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Jesus didn't die for himself. He died for us. A week in Bible prophecy, seven years. Genesis 29, verse 27. Jacob went down to work for a young bride, worked seven years, uh, going to marry Rachel, woke up on the honeymoon the next day and looked over and he'd married Rachel's sore-eyed sister Leah. Now, the Bible says that. I don't know what that means. Maybe one eye went one way or another. I've got that. But he worked another seven years. Here's the prophetic word. Laban said to, to Jacob whose name was changed to Israel, work for me another seven years, fulfill Rachel's week. Seven years. So when Daniel received the word of 70 weeks, that's 70 times 7, 490 years, God said we're going into the millennial reign in 490 years, but hold up. We're going to break this into three time periods. The first time period is when the commandment is given to Levi Iraq after 70 years. And by the way, I shared that a while ago that it happened again from 1917 to 1989, 70 years, 1919 to 1989, 70 years. And over 3 million Jewish people left the Soviet Union, went back to Israel. They came back. Their flashes, their, the, you know, uh, the, uh, what is that, the kibbutz and all those that are there. The, the Arabs were about to overtake the, the Jewish people in Israel and God sent 3 million home. Isn't that incredible? There's about to be another great move of Jewish people going back to Israel. Yeah. God sent it for fishermen and hunters to find them. Yeah. There's about to be a discovery that's going to awaken the Jewish people here in America, and they're going to want to go to Israel. Yeah. And here's the unique thing is that when that seven, week, that seven uh, weeks or 49 years were up, and they rebuilt the temple, it became known as Zerubbabel's temple. From that time of the completion of the second temple, 
to the time that Jesus was cut off or crucified was a total of 62 weeks. 62 times 7 is 434 years. God gave him the very year the Messiah would be cut off. I preached that for 29 years. But in March, God told me something I didn't know. He said, I not only told them the year, I told them the month and I told them the day I'd be crucified. I said, now wait a minute, Lord, I've read this book. I know this book and I haven't seen that. So it's hid from my eyes. You remember Elisha, the Shunammite woman came and, Ge and Gehazi went out to her. Elisha said, go see the Shunammite woman. Everything's all right with her and her son and her husband. It is well, it is well. Got to him, she fell down. And Gehazi, I'm going, and the man of God said, touch her not. She's troubled and God hath hid it from me. Okay. Listen, Amos 3 and 7 says, surely the Lord God will do nothing except he reveal his secrets to his prophets first. But God don't show us everything at the same time. And I don't mean God's name is Shirley just because it says Shirley the Lord God. Here's the unique thing. God spoke to me and told me that when John the Baptist was out baptizing in the River Jordan and they came and said, are you the Messiah? Are you the one we're looking for? They knew it was time for Jesus. They just didn't understand his three and a half year ministry. His, you know, he ministered for three and a half years. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. And John said, I'm not even worthy of loosening his shoes. He's coming after me. And then John saw Jesus coming. And what did he say? What did John say when he saw Jesus? Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I've read that for almost 30 years. And God said, when I said through John the Baptist, by the way, he called John the Baptist the greatest prophet that lived I never could understand that until I realized John gave them the very month and the very day because Passover was nice and 14. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, uh, it was the same day of the same month every year. They were to take a lamb on the 10th day of the first month, which was Nisan. They were to keep that lamb for four days, kill it on the 14th of Nisan. In 6 AD, they changed their calendars because they were trying to make a certain man, the Messiah. He didn't fit because he wasn't a Messiah. They changed their calendar to the Feast of Trumpets this year. September the 13th is their new year. They'll start 2016. Our new year is not until January the 1st. And here's the unique thing is that when he said, behold, the Lamb of God, he was saying, this man must be crucified on the feast of Passover. He told him the month and he told him the day. I said, oh my gosh, it's incredible. God said, I'm not going to give you a day nor an hour when I'm coming. He'll never get nobody today. He said, but you can tell it that I will return and the tribulation period will start between September of 2022 and September of 2023. And when God told it to me, listen, when God tells you something, you know it's God, you can preach it. You run with it. Amen? And I minister thir nearly 30 years. I'm careful what I say. Don't go out here and say, Brother Rick said Jesus is coming on a certain day because I hadn't given you a day nor an hour. Amen? Because we're talking about a 12-month period from 2012 to 2023. Uh, 2022 to 2023. Amen? Amen? But now Jesus said in Matthew 24, except that time be cut short, there'd be no flesh saved. Amen. We got enough weapons on this earth to destroy this world, but God's not going to allow it to happen. Right. Right. Amen? Listen, Jesus is going to appear. We're going to be caught up. There is a remnant that's going to be raptured from this earth. You don't want to be raptured? Hang around. I don't care. I'm going on the next load. Amen. So I'm, now listen, don't sit here and say, well, I'll wait till 2022 or 2023 and get saved. You better get saved tonight. You better be saved tonight. You're watching my television. You better be saved now. Because you might be in a drive-by shooting. You might be run over by a runaway bicycle. You might have a heart attack. You might die in the middle of the night. Amen. I mean, I've had relatives that just died and they were 20 and 30, 40. We got children in children's hospital. Death has no age limit. We need to be saved now. I mean, saved right now. 
How many knows you're born again? Amen? All right, now watch this. I'm going to close with this. God told me, here's the icing on the cake. God told me, he said, I gave Hezekiah 15 more years. And you're right. Why don't I give everybody 15 years? And God said, as of this month of September, now this is back in March, he said, but as of the month of September, between the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles, you'll enter into a new time. You'll enter into a seven to eight year window because of 2022 to 2023. He said, I'm giving mankind 15 more years. And he said, you go, and maybe they'll pull it up on the screen. Isaiah chapter 38. He said, when he gave Hezekiah, get your house in order, you're going to die. Amen. Hezekiah prayed, and God said, I'm going to add to your life 15 years. And Hezekiah, this is how you're going to know that I've done it. I'm going to cause there to be a sign in the sun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. The next scripture. Yeah. Behold, I'll bring in the shadow of the degrees which has gone down the sundial. God said, I'm going to cause there to be a sign in the sun. And you will know you got 15 more years. Listen, if you're not raptured, you got 15 more years. Unless you die before then. Somebody asked me, a young girl said, you mean I only got seven or eight years to get married and have babies? I said, unless you're left behind, you got 15 then. Amen. Because this month, the sun is a eclipse. Now, solar eclipse is not unusual. But for it to occur on the Feast of Trumpets between four blood moons, it's never happened. Yeah. So God has said, I'm giving you a sign. You better get your house in order. You better get your house in order. You better get ready for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Because here in just a few weeks, there is a move of God that's fixing to start and slap this earth. And you and I are right in the middle of it. And because of those cows, we got seven years of harvest and then seven years of famine coming. The tribulation period is going to be a time of famine. Amen. And, and, you know, even Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yeah. Amen. A lot of people quote 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And they'll say, well, you know, we can't be raptured until the man of sin is revealed. I said, you go and read that. Paul said, don't be shaken in mind or as by a letter from us, uh, as that day uh, will not happen until there be a departing first. And then the man, of, and for some reason, everybody wants to take that word departing and make it a backslidden church. There's got to be a departing first. And then the man of sin will be revealed. I wish somebody would get excited with me. You cannot buy or sell or trade in the tribulation period unless you have a mark, name, or a number. And you're a hand or forehead. That technology is here. 30-something thousand people have a microchip in their body right now. It's a transponder. In the future, it'll be moved to banking where... People in the future will go and buy something. They'll run their hand across the scanner instead of the product and the barcode. The barcode will be in the hand. You can't do that in the tribulation period. You can't buy, sell, trace if you have a mark, name, or a number. Yet the Bible says in Matthew 24, there'll be two working, grinding at the meal. One will be taken, one will be left. You can't have a job in the tribulation period without the mark of the beast. That's another scripture that tells us there's going to be people go missing, raptured before the tribulation period starts. I wish somebody would get excited with me. Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. I got friends. They're mid-trib. Oh, Jesus is coming in the middle of tribulation. I said, I can prove that's not true. Why is that? I said, because nobody knows the day nor the hour. And all we got to do when the, tree, the peace treaty is signed, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, when he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week or the last week, the last seven years, 
All we got to do is count it down, three and a half years, 42 months, 1260 days. We'll know the very day of the middle of the tribulation when the Antichrist stops the oblation and the sacrificing of the animals and goes and proclaims himself as God. We'd know the very day and we can't know the day because Jesus said so. So there can't be a rapture for the church in the middle of the tribulation or we'd know the day. Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad I wrote this in a book? Got on DVDs and all. Amen. Praise God. And I think we're, I didn't even bring, I'm out of the End Time Prophecy book. You have to go to our website, rickmadison.com and order one, or we'll send you one. I'm just telling you, get ready. Get ready. Now, if Jesus, when he was here and he went around, he preached the acceptable year of the Lord. He was anointed to heal the sick, open the eyes of the blind. He was anointed to perform miracles. But he was also anointed to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And what I'm telling you is that since I'm preaching to you the acceptable year of the Lord, I'm preaching to you the acceptable year of the Lord. A 12-month period is a year. Amen. That means there's about to be an outpouring of wonders and healings and miracles because that's what Jesus did in the beginning. And I'm telling you that God wants to use you. And I believe that God ordained this meeting to get you fired up and those that may be watching so that you can say, I'm ready to do something for God. I'm ready to lay hands on the sick. I'm ready to go to the nursing homes. I'm ready to cast out devils. I'm ready to call the sick on the phone. I'm ready to go out in the community. And then you might just be here and say, well, that's for somebody else to do. I ain't got time to do all that. I don't feel like doing it. And, and I realize sometimes... You don't feel like doing it. Amen? And you may be here tonight, and you're just, hey, I've done all I can do. I'm ready to get my robe and crown. I understand that too. But how many knows there's a lot of us here tonight, and there's people watching around the world that are able-bodied people. Amen? Amen? You may not be able to run like her, but you can walk through Walmart. You can push your buggy and say, Jesus is coming. Do y'all know Jesus yeah. as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. Amen? You walk up to somebody and say, Jesus is the real Messiah. Oh, yeah. You can hear somebody say, oh, I've been hurt. And you can say, I lay hands on you in the name of Jesus, and you'll get healed right here. Yeah. They say, pray for me when you get to your church. You ought to look them in the eye and say, you may not last till I get to church. I better pray for you now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I promise you, friend. Listen, God told me the day before 9-11 occurred. I can let you call the pastors that were there that heard it. I didn't know it on, on September the 10th in 2001 when 9-11 occurred. On the 10th, the day before, God told me, he said, tomorrow the world will change. You'll watch it on the news and it'll deal with Middle Eastern people. And I told the whole church that. Didn't know exactly what it was. God told me at 1 o'clock that day, he said, I've took out of the hearts of these terrorists what they intended to do in America because I'm not through with America. I said, what had they intended to do? He said, they intended, flying the, they intended on flying these planes into nuclear power plants. And God stopped it. Yep. Amen? Yeah. God told me in 1987, he said, there'll be a massive earthquake in California and everybody around the world will watch it. You go tell everybody. And I said, Lord, I, I tell people there's going to be an earthquake in California. I said, that's nothing unusual. He said, I said, everybody would watch it. So I went around telling everybody, there's going to be an earthquake in California in 1989. Everybody's going to watch it. It's going to be on television. Yeah. How's that going to happen? I don't know. He just told me to tell it. I'm like Jonah. He'd spit me out. That old fish spit me out. I'm just running and telling people. Yeah. 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 And the World Series kicked off in San Francisco and an earthquake took place while the World Series started and people around the world were watching the World Series. Amen? God told me in 1989, your country will go to war with Iraq. I didn't even know where Iraq was. He said, just the near future. Two years later, we were in Iraq. In 1991, God said, Israel's about to sign a seven-year treaty. And just a short time in the future, 93, they signed a seven-year treaty. 
which was a sign of the end times because Daniel chapter 9 says, they shall confirm a covenant with many for one week or seven years. If you wanted a sign that Jesus was coming, that was it. Amen. That treaty expired in 2000. But it's showing what Israel's going to do in the future. Their next treaty again will be for seven years. Jacob went down and worked and signed two seven-year treaties. Joseph went down and interpreted Pharaoh's dream. There were two distinct seven cows. Can you say amen? Oh, hallelujah. God said that we're entering a new time this month, and we're about to see an explosion in signs and wonders and miracles over the next seven years. I'm getting excited about it. You ought to stand to your feet. If nothing else, say, thank God he shut up and start praising God and leaping and saying, thank God Jesus is coming soon. Aren't you glad I didn't say tonight, Jesus is not coming until 2070 or 2050. He's coming for somebody tonight. Maybe watching my television. There's thousands of people dying every day. Somebody going out of this world right now, tonight. Somebody dying right now. Somebody being born right now. Amen. How many of there's a, a world dying? out there that's lost. Let me just say this in closing. There was seven Muslim men sitting around having tea. And one of them said, I had a very unusual dream last night. And the rest of them said, I had an unusual dream. And one of them said, what did you dream? I can't tell. It goes against the teachings of Islam. And they all said the same. And one of them said, I'll tell what I dreamed. I dreamed that a man walked up to me in a white robe and said he was Jesus in English. He used another word for Jesus. Speaking in Turkish or Arabic. But he said, I had a dream that he said he was the Messiah. And he showed me his hands and wounds in his hands. And he said, he was the only way to heaven. And the other six men raised their hands. And every one of them at the same time said, that's exactly what I dreamed. All seven Turkish Muslim men all of a sudden got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Started speaking in tongues. And they went through the villages preaching, Jesus is the Messiah. I'm going to tell you, God's going to have somebody to preach the gospel. Here just a while back, there was a young girl, five years of age, on America's Got Talent. Beautiful young girl. And uh, Howard Stern, of all people, said, you remind me of little Shirley Temple. You got some Shirley Temple in you. National and international television. This little girl said, no, I have Jesus in me. Yes. Did you see that? Hey, out of the mouth of babes, if you and I don't tell them, God will raise up somebody that will. If you and I are ashamed of the name of Jesus, God will raise up somebody that's not. You go from this place, you tell about Jesus is the Messiah. Don't just talk about the Lord and don't just say God, you tell them his name. Amen. Amen. That Jesus is the only way to heaven. How many believes he's the only way to heaven? Come on, raise your hands with me and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only way to heaven. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for washing me in the blood of Jesus. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I'm ready because of the blood of Jesus. Whenever you come, Lord, whatever time you come, I'm ready, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm ready. Whenever it is, Lord. Whenever you come, I'm ready. Oh, hallelujah. Whenever he comes. The Bible says in Luke 21, verse 36, to watch and pray that you may be 
counted worthy to escape these things coming on the face of the earth. There's some things fixing to start shaking. Don't be surprised what you see out in the streets. Don't be surprised what you see happening around the world. Amen. But know that you have a hedge around you. And God is your provider. And God's your protector. Amen. Don't get in fear and worry. You just jump out and say, Jesus is the Messiah. There are going to be some people needing some answers. And you and I need to know the word. I promise you, if you start praying and studying the word tonight, and I, and I need to do the same. Amen. We, I, listen, we don't know the word like we need to know the word. I know the word, but I need to know it more. Don't you? Hallelujah. I just wonder if you just come up here and stand around this front with your hands up and say, Lord, I need a double portion of boldness. I need miracles and healings to happen for me. I need you to heal my body so I can go out and be a witness, so I can go out and pray for people. Lord, I need a financial miracle so I can go and... Rick Madison here. Just want to encourage you to go to our website, rickmadison.com, uh, rickmadison.org. We have uh, about 22 DVDs on there now. Every one of them is two hours long. And uh, we offer them for $20 each. They're two hours each. But I just want to let you know that if you'd like to get a package deal, uh, then you can get 10 of those for $100. Or you can have all 20 of them. In fact, I'll just send you all 22 for a $200 offering. Now, that's a lot of word. That's like going to Bible college. And uh, I promise you that they will enlighten you on a lot of information in the Bible. Uh, how to hear the voice of God. How to move in the Spirit. Uh, what time it is. Where we're at in Bible prophecy. I mean, hours and hours of when is Jesus coming? When is the tribulation period going to start? Uh, is there a pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? Uh, how to uh, flow in the Spirit, how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You know, these are wonderful messages that will carry you to another level. And uh, again, if you'd like to go to our website, rickmadison.com, uh, they're $20 each, or they're 10 for 100 or 22 of them for 200 And we'll even pay the postage for you. And it'll help us tremendously if you'd like to become a partner with us. We appreciate that so much. Uh, any donation you could send, we'll send you back books or CDs or DVDs. So thank you for tuning in this in. God bless you. Thank you for watching Rick Madison and Friends. We trust you have received a fresh word today. You can partner with us by ordering today's special from our website, rickmadison.org. You will also find books, CDs, and DVDs to enrich your life. International evangelist Rick Madison is now accepting invitations to minister in your area. Contact him at rickmadison.org. Thank you for your prayers and support. Be sure to join us next time.